So I had to stop and think, well, why did I have a hard time getting into this? Hey there, Nomads of Lore. I'm Jonathan. And I'm Sean. <laughs> and together we are Mead and Mischief, your home away from no home. Today on this tale of not knowing what we're doing day. <laughs> that was funny are... the first time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're like four in. It's still funny, <laughs> At least. <right? laughs> uh, anyway, we are going to give you guys a spoiler-free review of Evan Winter, uh, The Rage of Dragons. Um, we both read this book a little while ago and have been, you know, doing crazy, th- you know, life's been crazy and all the things, <laughs> but we wanted to, uh, we wanted to try something different and do a little different style of review from our past reviews. We're just going to kind of talk about why we liked it, why we didn't like it, whatever, and kind of go back and forth and have a more discussion style like our current videos have been. If you like this and you want to hear our spoiler filled thoughts on this, then leave a comment down in the description. Mm-hmm. We also have read book two. And so if you'll like this enough, we might do our review of book two as well. But I guess let's get started. Sean, did you like this book? So I did like this book. Um, I, I, you know, Jonathan really, spoiler alert, Jonathan really liked this book. Um, and, but I, and, and so he was astonished that I had a hard time getting into this book, actually, for about the first half of this, this first book. I kind of struggled, uh, with this and, you know, it's, um, be, you know, there's, there's a lot going on, which, you know, and I, I was, you know, when Jonathan was like, yeah, what, why did you have a hard time getting into this? And he looked at me like, you're an idiot. He was like, why did you have a hard time? You know, the only thing I could <laughs> say at first was, was, uh, well, there's a lot going on that I just didn't care or whatever else. And, but then, then I started reading some other books, and I was thinking about these other series where you get dropped in the middle of whatever and not knowing characters. And, you know, like I've started, I'm reading the first book of Malazan right now, talking about not knowing what the heck is going on, <laughs> you know. And so I realized that's, that can't, it can't just be that I didn't know what was going on. So I had to stop and think, well, why did I have a hard time getting into this? And I think, so there's, so there were two things that I think were, were struggling at first. One, was one was that you know I felt like in this book we were dropped in the middle of these tragic things like like uh, there's deaths and there's things and I'm supposed to care about these characters I felt like I was supposed to care about like I was supposed to feel bad for this these people that was happened this yeah. person specifically you know and and these other people tell, and, yeah right? and I was supposed to feel bad for them but I didn't feel bad for them because I didn't know them yet and I didn't care and so yeah. is is more the expectation of of concern it's almost like you know at the beginning of wheel of time tv show where Perrin kills his wife we're supposed to care we don't know Perrin, you know whatever else you know yeah. and and so it's kind of like that so that was part of it i think that you know stuff was happening and that i was and whatever but the other thing was at the first at first in this books book it felt like just a pure and simple revenge tale bad stuff happened to me i'm gonna go kill the people involved Mm -hmm. come heck or high water i don't care whatever else and i and i find those stories you know like we talked about the patriot um you know with mel gibson and i i I don't like, like Braveheart, I love, you know, there's a lot going on, you know, there's more interest there and whatever. Um, but I don't like a pure revenge tale. I find those stories to be I, droll. That's I, I, not the best description, but I, I don't enjoy that. And so yeah. I, I didn't like that because that's all it felt like for a while, you know, is, is this, this guy that's moping around because of stuff that I, that happened to him that I didn't care. So I didn't like the guy to begin with. Yeah. And so, but as it continued and had to progress, and we won't give I won't give all the, the spoilers, but as we start to learn more about the world and about the magic, magic system, system, you know, I you know, and whatever else, which is you know it is a magic system, it, like any other fantasy book, but it's it's more like the like I don't know, it's almost like a sci fi magic I don't know, it's hard to describe without Get giving because there's a lot of spoilers associated with the magic system. Yeah. So um, you get layers to, peeled back like an onion. Yes. Kind of in this and, book. and so as, as you as, as you start to learn more about the world and that gets more interesting. And then 
we we get more motivations, and I, I won't spoil too much, but but more as we get more details about the world, and not just about the magic system, but about the politics and about the world. Yeah. I do one interesting thing that that you don't see very much in fantasy in this story that is really kind of interesting is you know in a lot of stories you have the nobility right, and the nobility they're the bad guys, they're the you know they're the evil person, and that's still kind of true in this, but they literally are more more physically larger and stronger and like there's a reason why that it's not that just there's a, there's a lot of times in, in most stories it's yeah the, it's the nobility and, they, and they, yeah they, they were the born into that, wealth yeah and they, whatever they else were set up from their birth yeah they but this yeah they they really there's a reason why i mean they they are a lot of them are pretty terrible and don't use it any better than they do in like Mistborn or any other story yeah. where you have nobility they they still are pretty scummy with the power you know power ultimate power corrupts ultimately or whatever the saying is, is yeah. something like that or, you know, whatever else. But so I, I liked it more and more um, as you also as have some continue. growth in the character and the, the you do uh, the more in, the the storyline for him kind of. Yes. Goes from pure revenge to, OK, wait, we got more going on. Yes. And it you know, and that continues even into book two. And we yeah. do. And there is this, you know, and even from the earliest earliest parts uh even from the earliest parts of the book you you see this interplay of 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 violence is is violence good is and you you do get the sense that the author is playing with is this is he's going for revenge but you don't even even in the beginning even in early phases you don't really get the sense of the author being like this is a good thing and oh they wrong you know and whatever yeah. i mean it's it's yeah. more subtle but especially yeah. looking back you know yeah. there's it's it's that that is a is a definitely a central theme of yes. uh is so is if even if even if you get the revenge is it is gonna, it gonna be, be good and yeah. and is it gonna be worth it and all so yeah. anyway so you were told about this this story you you were the one that got me to read it which we've, we've kind of well i guess wheel of time we did the same thing yeah but um yeah. uh so <coughs> what why what, what, you why did you read it, and what did you what did you what did you think about <laughs> it? So I had some it? friends tell me about it, and they were like, "Oh, it's the best thing ever since sliced bread." And I was like, "Okay, well, we'll see." So I listened to it. first of all the narrator, and I'm big like obviously since a lot of my reading time, I wish I had more time to actually physically read, and I may get to a little bit more now that I've got a new job, be at home a little bit more. Um, but Anyway, the narrator is phenomenal. Uh, it's very, very good. He's he's got a good, easy listening voice, but he's very. Um, it's very diverse between the characters, and you can tell who's talking when people are talking, and it's it's really good. Um, so that drew me in immediately. But then other things that you've heard me talk about that Sean's not so big on, and it's no wonder that he had such a hard time, uh, you know, getting into it. But things that I like a lot are action sequences and. Evan Winter is great at his action sequences. He's just as good as, well, I guess that's a that could be a point of contention. Who knows if he's as good, but he's he's close to, if not as good or better than Brandon Sanderson is with with some of his action sequences. There's some really good stuff there. I love the. I would I would the, disagree uh, with that wholeheartedly, but well, there you go. That's, <laughs> that's why I said as good or close to or somewhere in there. But he's he's really good. And the uh, the the magic system was really interesting. And then on the flip side of what what uh, Sean said, he hates revenge stories. And one of my favorite stories, one of my favorite uh, movies of all time is The Count of Monte Cristo. And it's a revenge story. But we kind of got a little further past that in our discussion right before the video. And we were like, why are we, why are we talking through this now? We need to be talking on video because it goes so much better than anyway. Um, but we were talking about how uh, a purely revenge story, I'm not a big fan of either. Like The Patriot... I think I liked it initially, but it was more because um, Mel Gibson I was a huge fan of. and, and um, You heard it here. Jonathan likes anti-Semitic drunk guys. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, Lord. He was a good actor oh, <laughs> before Lord. his stupidity. He opened up a can of worms. <laughs> RDJ came back from stupidity, too. People can change well, and grow. <laughs> I was about to say something really sweet about a guy who, who is now not, no longer with us, too. But anyway. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> uh -oh. no, I, uh, uh, the Joker. I love him too. Oh, but Heath anyway, Ledger. yeah, 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 yeah. Right, Heath yeah. Ledger. Um, so anyway, I I kind of liked um, the Patriot when it came out, but 
as I have grown and, and all that, and my tastes have probably grown, Braveheart has far surpassed that in my mind as far as something that's long living in the Count of Monte Cristo and other things like that. And, and it's it's nice to see when, I think I think a revenge story is pretty good, but when you add um, like revenge that ends up like there's a change in the person's heart by the end that there's a re like maybe the revenge wasn't all that sweet at the end or, or whatever, you know, there's some growth that goes through that revenge. I think that makes it much more easy, easy to, pa uh, much more palatable. If I can use my words, much more palatable and much easy to, and definitely. interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's, and it's more realistic because I think it's the same thing that we all struggle with as far mm -hmm. as, you know, I want to get back at this person because of whatever. And then you realize, oh, I, can't act like a two-year-old. I need to, you know, think of, think about my actions. I don't know. And, Have you uh, seen Congress? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, we're really going down a dark hole today. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, I I love the storyline. Love the main character. Another thing that I, I was coming off of a whole lot of Brandon Sanderson, uh -huh. and so I had a lot of storylines <laughs> that are intermingled and Cosmere <laughs> and lots darker of whatever <laughs> and all these things, and then I come into the story that's very dark and. And for those of you that, you know, have a problem with the darker things, there's a little bit of sex sexual stuff that's in here. There's a lot of brutality and... and um, graphic violence. Graphic, graphic violence, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. So if y'all have a problem with that, just a forewarning. Um, may want to stay clear, but... I don't even know what grim dark is anymore because it gets a little muddy, but it, this is definitely grim dark. <laughs> <laughs> but it... Uh, I was coming off of all Brandon Sanderson, and so it was kind of the perfect storm of... Okay, simplify down to one narrator and just, mm -hmm. you know, a few storylines around this one, not narrator, but one main character. POV. And a POV, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and so um, I think that's why I really, really enjoyed it was the kind of a combination of a whole bunch of different things. But I really, really enjoyed the book. And, and by the end, I think mm -hmm. Sean enjoyed it quite a bit. And then uh, we can definitely go into more discussion about book two in another video. Yeah. but. I feel like by the end of this, uh, I was very set on, I need to read book two. And for those of you who like um, single POV or very few POV books where you don't have to keep up with a whole lot of characters, there are, you know, there's uh, several, there's lots of characters, but it's mm -hmm. not anywhere near Brandon Sanderson or Wheel of Time or anything like that. Um, those of you that like action sequences, violence, uh, you know, some, some revenge, uh, or headed, Interesting headed characters. Towards there's there's revenge. some good characters and big some. thing is culture in this. It's it's mm -hmm. uh, there's some really cool cultural things yeah. in this. Um, and then the magic system's really cool and the the casts, the lower cast, the basically levels of nobility. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, there's a lot of really cool things about yeah, it. There are absolutely so so check, it, check out. it out. Let yeah. us uh, let us know what you think about it and whether you would like a a more spoiler filled discussion because uh, we we would love to do that if there's enough folks that are interested in it and yeah and we talk more about the, the magic system and specifics on characters all the yeah. things yeah you guys have a wonderful week we'll talk to you soon bye-bye